luck. All right, I'm nervous, so I'm going to ask you one favor. If everybody will just take a breath at the same time with me. Oh, that helps so much. Thank you. For most of my career as a counselor and a community engagement facilitator, I've been in the role of a professional listener to stories. And of all the stories that I've heard, it's been the stories of people who are dying that have really stayed with me and taught me the most. I've worked for hospice for 18 years, and for about the first eight years of that, I was a bedside counselor. And I remember when I first started that job, I had absolutely no reference point at all for what it was like to be around people that are dying. Um, my only schema was really from the movies. So I half expected people to turn into Yoda, I think, and <laughs> whisper Jedi secrets in my ear from their deathbed. Um, somebody just got excited. That did not happen. <laughs> in reality, people at the end of their lives are still just people, and they're doing the best that they can to make sense of where they are in the journey. And dying is a very personal and individual thing, and every life story is unique. But I can tell you that even through the uniqueness of every story that I witnessed, I noticed some hopeful consistencies in what seemed to matter and not matter to people who were in their last chapter and sometimes the last paragraph of their last chapter. So while I can't share Jedi secrets, I'll try to share some of those lessons with you. People used to ask me um, often how I could possibly enjoy my job. How could I like watching people die all day long? And I had the hardest time trying to explain that the reason I loved what I was doing is because people at the end of their lives are incapable of bullshit. <laughs> They really are. Um, when a person's relationship with their body and with activity and doing changes, and when they're facing the task of wrapping up an entire life, a lot of the normal, worldly, daily distractions that usually tempt us away from being honest with ourselves kind of fall off the map. And those distractions are different for everybody. They're things like being right, um, which we heard about earlier, being important, being busy, um, being guilty, being self-conscious, that kind of stuff. So good, bad, or indifferent, at the end of their lives, many people become these distilled, crystallized, pure versions of who they are. And with no time or strength left to be otherwise, they're being who they really are. And out of this sense of authentic self, people get incredibly courageous and open and intimate and honest. They'll talk about things they've never expressed before. They will reconsider things that they have been certain about for their entire lives. They do brave stuff like change their mind and apologize and forgive. They express love where it needs to be expressed and they manage to find joy in the smallest moments. As their bodies slow down, their perspective seems to shift, and their presence actually seems to expand. The New York Times last year did a feature on a guy named Neil Selinger, who was a retired attorney, and he was exploring his interest in writing when he was diagnosed with ALS. And as he deteriorated, he wrote essays about his experience. And the Times feature quoted a piece of one of those essays that said, as I diminished, I grew. As I lost so much, I finally started to find myself. And I saw this theme of finding oneself over and over and over, not with everybody, but with most people and much more often than I would have thought. And the more time I got to spend with people who were in their last chapter, the more I learned about the incredible transformative power of this kind of authenticity and what it could offer us and how it was possible. A lot of what I'm talking about is reflected in theories about the developmental tasks of the end of life. Yes, you still have them even when you're dying. It ends up that some of the purpose in facing your mortality is to look back on the body of work of your life 
and develop a deep sense of self and really finally awaken to the preciousness of time. And the end of life is the place where this kind of normally and naturally happens, I guess because illness and decline causes a sort of forced sitting meditation. You know, don't just do something, sit there. So roughly and probably inappropriately put, when we're young, we're fearless and we set a course. And then somewhere in the middle of our lives, we start questioning the course. And then at the end of our lives, we find the answers about the course. An Australian hospice worker named Brony Ware um, wrote a memoir called The Top Five Regrets of the Dying. She asked a bunch of her hospice patients if they had any regrets. And the number one regret that she noted is, I wish I had had the courage to live a life true to myself and not the life that others expected of me. So dying people teach us that it's never too late to shed what's false and to become who we truly are. But I'd like to hope that it's never too soon. I mean, does your physicality have to diminish before you realize that you're not just your body? Do you have to be dying before you realize that you don't have a soul? You are a soul. So here's the challenge if you are willing to accept it today. Let's don't wait until we're at the end of our lives to find out who we really are. And I'll tell you why I think this is so important. And I'm going to get cosmic on you, so hang with me. Let's assume together, for the purposes of, of this talk, that there is a creative force in the universe. And you can call that God or biology or evolution or whatever you want. But there is a creative force that constellated all the elements and put each of us together the way we are. You are a creative expression of that force. And you are the only one that is or ever will be constellated just the way you are. You're the only one who thinks like you. You're the only one that sees the possibilities that you see. You're the only one who loves the way you love. You're it. And while we're all cosmic brothers and sisters and that we're all made of energy and life force and all that stuff, in this incarnation anyway, you're the only piece of that life force that's shaped just like you with your particular insight and artistry and passion. So if we're all collectively one symphony, then we're each as individuals different notes. And every single one is important. Have you ever asked yourself the big existential question, what am I supposed to be doing with my life? Oh, I can barely see, but I see all the people like over 40 are nodding. Um, <laughs> well, I have good news. Um, I think that's the wrong question. I actually think the better question is, who am I being with my life? There is an intersect between doing and being, but I'm pretty sure being comes first. And what you're supposed to be doing with your life will flow out of who you truly are. You really can't screw that up if you do it that way. Elizabeth Gilbert wrote, um, God shows up in us as us. And I think what this means is that that creative force actually needs you to figure out who you are so that you can create in the world and for the world as only you can. Imagine if we all figured out how to do that. If we all figured out who we truly are and we contributed to the world through that. And imagine if we all figured out how to do it while we still had healthy working bodies. Action and creativity and innovation that comes from true authenticity is what moves the world forward. And it has the lovely side effect, by the way, of creating joy. We sense intuitively that this stuff is important. I mean, there are country songs and Facebook updates, and um, I'm sure there's a Lost Oprah episode somewhere that are devoted to the, the theme of living every day like it was your last. But I'd like you to consider how you would do this. And it might not be by jumping out of an airplane or riding a bull for 2.7 seconds or completing a bucket list of adventures. 
Take a hint from how people actually spend their last days. If you really want to live every day like it's your last, then do some introspection. Discover and express your amazing uniqueness in the world. Stop bullshitting. Make your life story about how you truly are, because I believe the world needs you to. Thank you.